Welcome to Wrestling in 60, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic, where we present the weekend's best matches from around the country's premier wrestling conference, the Big Ten. We begin with our pick at number six. Patrick McKee and Michael D'Augustino has actually beaten Patrick McKee as we look to these two wrestlers as they get tied up as we begin this dual meet. Drake Ayala doing a good job of catching D'Augustino's leg. Diog's wrestling tough here though. D'Augustino choosing to stick it in as Ayala tries and get on top. And that's what he's so good at. He doesn't get scored on in positions like that very often. He keeps wrestling. As you see those smarts on the wrestling mat, D'Augustino fifth at the Big Ten Championships last year. Just has more experience coming up against a true freshman. And I think that's gonna be the difference here as we see these wrestlers get back at it in the middle of the mat. D'Augustino and Ayala just feeling each other up here. Ayala once again trying to shoot for that right leg of D'Augustino. Ayala has that right leg of D'Augustino. We'll look to flip it around and put D'Augustino on his back. Mike staying in tough with that wizard. It's a potentially dangerous call. So we'll go back to the neutral position. Just under a minute and a half here at 125 pounds in the first matchup of tonight. Iowa coaches, Tom Brands, his brother, Terry Brands, nice and vocal as they try to coach the freshman through this matchup. Mike was looking for a little post high C there, looked like. Didn't quite get it, but uh, that's a dangerous shot from him. Augustino doing a very good job to fend off Ayala. Nice. And Augustino will get the takedown, scoring the first points of tonight and the first points in this matchup. And that's the second time Ayala's been looking for that shuck. Mike felt it coming and wrestled at the position, spun around, got the takedown. That's a big takedown. Uh, we saw that in his match last weekend against uh, Pat McKee from Minnesota, uh, scoring in the last couple seconds. But Ayala did a really good job just getting out before he could throw his legs in there. Ayala getting that vital escape point also stopping the riding time of Michael D'Augustino at 19 seconds. Ayala has three wins this season so far. Decision 6-1 over Devin Schroeder of Purdue. Also defeated Noah Certain of Mizzou twice. <laughs> D'Augustino fighting to get that escape point. Drake Ayala cuts him loose. 3-1 in favor of the Wildcats. Both wrestlers grappling here in the middle of the mat. D'Augustino looks to be feeling for that eye just a bit. And Ayala will go right back to the head of D'Augustino. D'Augustino going for that head. Looking to secure the takedown, ref says no. As long as Mike's got that whizzer in, he can uh, prevent Ayala from circling around and collecting both legs, so that's not a takedown until he gets fully behind him. Ayala has that right leg of D'Augustino. He's got a cradle locked up. And that will be two points for Ayala. And a near fall, two points for Ayala once again. 
Iowa coaches on their feet, want the fall. Tom Brands and Coach Terry Brands arguing, saying that DiAgostino had his shoulder down on that mat. Four seconds, Jamie, what did you see? I didn't see a fall. Definitely some back points though. That was a nice cradle for Ayala. Ayala reverses the score here, five to three, 10 seconds left in this second period. DiAgostino trying to get that escape. Ayala targeting that right leg once again. Second period finishes, season that was cut short due to COVID, the national championships canceled. Last year we were able to have that once again and Ayala gets that escape point as the score goes six to three in favor of the Hawkeyes. DiAgostino trying to score a takedown to get this match close. Just over a minute and a half here left at Welsh Ryan Arena at 125 pounds. Michael DiAgostino taking on true freshman Drake Ayala. Ayala scoring a huge takedown and near fall at the end of the second period. Look, shot in on a nice little low double there. He's coming through the back door. Looking to isolate one of Ayala's legs and uh, put him down to the side. Maybe hook the leg and just work for his takedown here. This is uh, an advantage position for DiAgostino. Ayala's head completely in the mat here. Ayala did a good job tying up DiAgostino's ankles there, not letting him move around and work for the takedown. Uh, but he's absolutely got to keep wrestling for the rest of this match. Ayala has DiAgostino's leg once again. DiAgostino. Flips it. 30 seconds left on the clock. Drake Ayala ranked number 12 in the nation, but DiAgostino ranked number seven. This would be a huge victory for the Hawkeyes. DiAgostino has to shoot for that takedown. Only about 15 seconds left on the clock. Riding time Looking is a non-factor in this one. Mike's looking for something big, but time's winding down. He keeps wrestling, locks in the takedown, but... At the end of that one, DiAgostino scoring a late takedown. Or Ayala score, pardon, scoring a takedown. It was, it was Mike DiAgostino okay. scoring the takedown. Scoreboard had it switched up, but DiAgostino scores a takedown, but it's Ayala who takes that one, six to five. Welcome back to Wrestling in 60, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. And now we'll look at number five. You got you know, Patrick Buck Brucky from Michigan, you got Jacob Warner for Iowa, and you got Max Dean, the transfer from Cornell. NCAA runner-up at 184 in this weight class now. And so it's, it's one of the weight classes that you could kind of look to and say, hey, you know, who's going to finish, what's, what's the order going to be between the teams there, and who's going to be the guy that gets an opportunity to contend, because the field in this weight class is pretty good. I think that's a good realization for those trying to prognosticate what's going to be happening in mid-March, where you've got Iowa with the loss of Spencer Lee, what happens there with Drake Ayala, and Penn State as good as they are, and could Michigan be in that mix as well? So 197, a crucial factor. Look at the balance here by Max Dean, Mike. He's just potentially getting the neutral danger call. He wants to hold on to that wrist. He's got the wrist tied up right there, and the shoulders are past 90. Now they roll out of it. Good work by Bulzak just to stay out of that. Now he's trying to switch back in. It's very difficult to switch back into an ankle ride. He actually, he's given him the points. There's 2 nothing for Dean, who at 10-0 has gotten bonus points in nine of his first 10 matches and has scored a team high 45 dual points. Now even at two with Bulzak on top. And Bulzak's had some tough matches so far this year where he's been able to go ahead and use his prowess in the top position. See him right back with that reversal. Bulzak a four-time NCAA qualifier. Now down 3-2. And the closest match he's had this year was a good one against Nino Bonacorsi from Pitt. Last year's runner-up at the NCAAs. 
Good work by both guys here with 3-2. Neither guy waited around. No, oh, this is a matchup you imagine they really look forward to because they have met before, but it's been quite some time when they wrestled in 2017, which was a red shirt year for both, and Dean won both of those matchups. Making a statement. Dean, the first good look that we've seen with him in a Penn State singlet, you know, wrestled for Cornell. His brother, the national champion there a couple times. Gabe Dean. The two-time champ and Max here for Penn State took 2020 as the Olympic redshirt year in the in the Ivy League, not competing in last year's winter sports season. So he's eager to be back out here. He's got the 3-2 lead, 18 seconds remaining in the first period. He's done a great job of cutting the corner here on this double A. Can he go ahead and pound him back down and get his hips on the mat? Bullsack now in a switch position. Can he turn it to his favor? And get locked up, and he does. Bolzak does it with just five seconds left on the first period clock, and he takes a 4-3 lead at the end of one, an action-packed opening three minutes at 197 for Penn State. But at the break, it was an 11-9 Rutgers lead. Like what they're coaching in here, there's, there's his hand fighting down there, Bulls, Bullsack is, is that he's, Bullsack is looking right now He's got to make his turn. He's got a locked hands call. There's a locked hands call by the outside official, Jerron Quincy. So, Bullzak will go out to a 5-3 to three lead. This call that erases four seconds of riding time that had been advantage deep. He's got a switch. Boy, I tell you what. He, that's postcard. Every Junior high coach in the country loves teaching that switch, and he does. And I like what he does is he reaches for it, but then he gets his hips out, makes the big turn. 197, perhaps my favorite weight. The athleticism, the strength. Here we've seen the agility as well as we've seen the a, a pistol squat held earlier by Dean. The splits from Bolzak. And Bolzak jumps back in on the leg off of that technique. Now he's going to be able to come up. Yes, he, now he's potentially dangerous call. That's a good call. I don't want anybody hurt this time of year. Just the third Big Ten match of the season for Penn State. Big Ten duel of the season for Penn State. And the fourth for Rutgers. Take a look at that sequence here by both guys rolling through. Dean is getting to the legs, but he's getting the corner cut and he's getting out scrambled. As you mentioned earlier, these two teams are going to be heading to Michigan next weekend. They'll be flip-flopping in Ann Arbor and East Lansing, taking on Michigan State and Michigan. Once again, a counter shot there by Dean. He's in on the leg. He gets his ankles tied up a little bit. He collapses that hip down, scoops the bottom leg. This is difficult to get out of here for Bullzak. But he's, he's doing his best by getting on his hands, but he's going to, with the lead, I think he's going to, Trying to roll through a little bit more. Now he gives up the takedown with the neutral danger call. And the fact that Dean's behind him. So I'm looking over at the Penn State corner and I wonder to have him keep him down at the end of the second period. So unanswered points the other direction. Bozak held a 6-3 lead. His advantage is one. Time at 14 seconds it's in favor of uh, Max Dean. You know, at, at this stage, there's no secrets. Max Dean wants to get in on the right leg. Bullsack pretty good at cutting the counter and, and, and uh, switching and countering here. Who's going to be able to mix it up? Now he gets to a leg one more time. Stall warning on Greg Bullsack. Look at that scrambling ability there. This time there's a little bit better position here for Dean. Can he go ahead and bump him onto his hips? He gets the far ankle locked up. He should be able to do that. Most guys go down here. Trying to secure the two, nothing yet. He's gonna try to tuck his head up underneath that ankle. Can he get there? Nothing yet. Boy, he's really exerting a lot of energy. There's the two. Scooping the leg. 8-6. Dean of Penn State in the lead in the final minute of the third. Both guys going hard here. Bullzak trying to cover the hands, come up to the feet, make the turn, but he waited too long, and Dean's back in on an ankle. 
He's getting the five count against him. He's going to get called for stalling. Go. 25 seconds left with Dean on top and a two-point lead. Really working hard for that switch. The problem with that, if you can tie up the hips and the lower body right there, you're just following. See how he's just following? Just, just guide him, grabs the far hip, comes in on the leg. Everywhere that Bolzak went in that sequence, Dean followed like an unwelcome shadow, and he is three and a half seconds away from a victory. Yeah, Bolzak was just one explosive move away from getting that escape, maybe getting back into this match, but Max Dean has proved to be the better guy, the better wrestler on the feet, and they take home a big win. Impressive scrambles by both guys. Wrestling in 60 is brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built. Welcome back as we count down the weekend's best competition from around America's premier wrestling conference. Here at number four. Mountain has really hands. meant a lot uh, to the Husker team. And Watch your hands. The Huskers didn't have the team um, uh, execution last year in the NCAAs, but uh, Labrioli getting third place really did a great job now nice job there by labriola for the takedown there labriola 10 and 1 this season ranked number five in the country he's coming off of his first loss of the year to produce garrett nyhaus six to four last weekend as we are in the midst of big 10 wrestling two to nothing though for labriola in the early going Bailey O'Reilly, the redshirt senior from Goodhue, yeah, Minnesota, defeated Northwestern's Troy Fisher by a 9-5 decision on Sunday. Lost 9-2 to Michael Kemmerer last Friday night here on the Big Ten Network. Both of the coaches love each of these wrestlers. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Labriola, the All-American, etc. Well, that's not O'Reilly, but he's a captain. He's a, a guy that uh, is, has total respect on the team because of the way he works in the practice room and on the mat. And uh, Coach Egham was just saying that uh, he's a, uh, a guy that the guys love to have on the team. Well, the one thing that head coach Brendan Ingham told us is that O'Reilly's successful when he's firing shots and pushing the pace. But that's easier said than done against the three-time All-American and Mikey Labriola. Midway point of the first period. Hot fingers. Guys, we stay out there. Minnesota leading. Still to come, Gable Stevenson, the Olympic gold medalist. He'll wrestle a heavyweight against Christian Lance. Good sprawl there by... Bailey O'Reilly. Good hard head snaps by Labriola. That works the lower back of O'Reilly. Looking to turn that body, look for the angles. Labriola is just tough to beat. He's explosive, great reattacks, but can scramble as well. well you saw that first takedown. I mean, that was his ability to, to uh, scramble. Well, earlier in the year, he defeated hand. Bailey O'Reilly by an 11-4 decision at the Dectronics Open back on November 21st. Let's brawl there by Labriola. Still 2-1 advantage for the Cornhusker. Yes, good. Fake, 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 more fake. Yes. As you pointed out, Tim, for O'Reilly, though, to get the captain, one of the captain spots for Minnesota, I think that speaks volume on his work ethic and how much respect the guys have for him. Here in the end of our first period between Mikey Labriola, ranked number five in the country, against Bailey O'Reilly of Minnesota. Well, Minnesota has to be real happy with O'Reilly because, you know, he's, he's tough. He makes every match tough. He needs to keep this close and make Labriola wrestle a full seven. And here's the scramble ability. Comes up, catches the leg, gets behind. Two points for Labriola. Only two points scored in the first period. The one thing, Tim, if you make a mistake against Mikey Labriola, he will make you pay instantly. And so far, O'Reilly really hasn't made many mistakes. Stayed in really good position, making it hard on Labriola. But what he's got to do is stay in there, stay tough, and make Labriola go seven minutes. 
And it's a two-point advantage for Labriola on as he rose to his feet. I like the way O'Reilly's making uh, Labriola work for everything. Uh, he, he, uh, he's keeping the pressure on him. Mikey Labriola looking to capitalize on that run that he had last year. Third place at the NCAA and the Big Ten Championships trying to go ahead and capture a national title this year. That the primary focus. Arm wrestle ahead. Arm wrestle ahead. He's certainly one of the leaders for Mark Manning and the Cornhuskers. As we approach a minute to go in the second period. Labriola being aggressive, but O'Reilly not backing down. Because he's keeping his hands on Labriola. He's keeping him there, and he's not letting Labriola bounce around and be explosive. So it's partly because of what O'Reilly is doing that's negating the offense of Labriola. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he's not letting... Labriola can work from whether it's inside or from space, and O'Reilly is keeping his hands heavy Get out of on inside tie. Nice job on the sprawl right there. Tremendous mat awareness and athleticism being displayed by the redshirt senior Bailey O'Reilly from Minnesota, hanging tough against the number five ranked Mikey Labriola. You, you can kind of hear Manning saying, "Don't let him hang on your head." I mean, and so it, it, he's carrying this out to perfection, O'Reilly. Not, not the same capacities, not the same level uh, as uh, success as Labriola's had. Oh, Mikey uh, Labriola, his loss to Garrett Nyhouse. He goes, it's just one match. You're going to see a different guy. Stay with them. All right. And now Bailey O'Reilly cuts that deficit. Three to two, the advantage for Mikey Labriola as we are into the third period. And I talked about making Labriola go seven minutes, and O'Reilly is doing that. Against somebody of the caliber of Mikey Labriola, you just want a, an ability and the opportunity to win the match. One and shot. That's what nice done. job there and the slide by. I think he, there, there's two. Labriola, great execution there. One mistake and it'll cost you. O'Reilly has made two mistakes and it has paid dividends for Mikey Labriola. 65 seconds left in the third period. As much as O'Reilly was fighting, Labriola did not step back either. I mean, he stepped in there, he knew what he needed to do and it was a nice job there on executing that uh, uh, takedown, sealing the deal uh, probably uh, now. It's hard to score on Labriola, and so far O'Reilly hasn't uh, scored in, um, from a standpoint of on his feet. Tim, one thing you know, in the Big Ten Conference, anybody can be beaten on any given night. Best conference in, in America for sure, and that's why dual meets, the matchups are so important. Nice job here. Now, nice job of dropping down in on the leg. Oh, and nice and job, O'Reilly. Can he get it? Can he tie it up? And he gets it. Oh, my goodness. We are tied up at five apiece. Three, Whoa. Three, 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 Welcome back as we count down the weekend's best competition from around America's premier wrestling conference. And now we'll look at number three. And down at 165. And I think this is a better weight for him. Just, you know, personally, some guys can move up the weight and they just don't ever uh, gain the size it takes to be able to be competitive. But, uh, you know, I think Ethan Smith does look pretty good at this weight. Massa, he's just always had all the tricks. You know, the, the, just all the... Efficiencies, tough in the top position. Poise, a lot of straight on shots, and you know, a guy that uh, you could, you know, I'd go all the way back to that overtime match that he had with Vincenzo Joseph when Joseph was a, a, a freshman that ended up winning, going on and winning the national championship. I mean, 
everybody thought at that point in time Massa was going to be the guy that challenged uh, you know Martinez for the national title. They wanted to look forward to seeing that match and and uh, close overtime battle on that one. But you know his uh, college career never really kind of gained the momentum it probably could have. You know just so many things happen in this sport that where you can kind of catch fire or just lose just a slight little uh, bit of edge. But uh, this is a talented wrestler that never stops him, never stops from recognizing what a talent that Massa is. And, and uh, Smith is just one of those guys from Ohio State who's just stayed in the room, stayed the course. A lot of points his last two matches. Wins against Pittsburgh and Michigan State. Paratech falls for Ethan Smith. Put up 50 points combined in those two matches, but of course a different opponents. And the savvy veteran Logan Massa. No score, 120 first period. Smith has two losses, one to Makai Lewis. That was 6-4 in the duel with the Hokies. The other to Mikey Labriola, lost 7-5. In Vegas, did Smith. That was in the CKLB final. Nice shot. Massa running to that leg. Good job of squaring up there by Smith. Now he comes into a front headlock. And, uh, Chuck action that we've seen here earlier from some of the Michigan wrestlers. And so he's really good in the front headlock position. And he will attack below the knee as well. He stands out around a lot out there, but you can get below the knee pretty efficiently. Just over 30 seconds here in the opening frame. Scoreless with Massa and Smith. There's a warning on the Buckeye Smith as Massa dives in now caught underneath in a tough position. Oh, just off, just got that stall warning just based on the number of attempts. He's been willing to commit himself to. Just dives all the way in there. The 38th Wolverine in program history. So he hit the century mark. 54 of those bonus point victories for Massa. Fingers. Scoreless after three minutes. Yes, Smith Switching. grabbing a single leg. Yeah, getting a little Still crackdown green. action right there. So Still green. Still in a position Still to green. make the decision. If, are you going to go ahead and just try to get an escape out of this scramble? Or are you just going to go green. ahead? Because right now, Mass is still in good shape. And Mass has got to be careful with neutral danger. And it's going to be a reversal, I think, Jim. There it is. But all the way behind. You don't have to take the guy down to the mat on a reversal. You just have to get behind him. So, you know, Mass is going to be one of those guys, too, is 1-0 on the only one match. One green neutral center. Probably want to try to test him a little bit more in that bottom position, particularly with all the international wrestling he's been doing, but gets to his feet pretty quickly and gets the escape. So this is going to be settled on the feet. And wouldn't be surprised if this is a OT match. Both guys, nice commitment there by Massa. But straight on. Straight on, exactly. Press on the edge. But the, 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 the thing that, that Massa does with his shots that, that a lot of guys don't do, he does it to set up He'll go straight in on, I got a double leg shot, but he'll be trying to get to a single. If you overcommit too much on the, on the uh, trying to go around behind him, he'll be in on a single leg and he can score from there. So these are double legs designed almost, if he gets it, that's great, but he, he's very confident he's not gonna get spun around. There's a shot, we mentioned before, below the knee. Good scramble there, and Smith was able to get it. Slick work from Smith. A reversal and a takedown here in the second. This is big 25 seconds here. If you're Smith, you want to keep that three-point lead. Take that to the third. The battle's within the battle. Yeah, and just no, no forward hand pressure, Shane. If you want to get a good mat return, you got to give yourself a chance with a good jam off the whistle. Escape by Massa. Pulls to within two late here in the second period. He'll have choice. After deferring at the end of the first, goes double unders, trying to jack up the Buckeye. Good finish here from the Buckeye, Jim. It really was. It's just off of that shot, and he jumped over to the far side right there and then collects both ankles there. Not much of a reaction as he's able to get across. There's Peachy's reaction right there. You know, the 
if you recall last year, One green neutral. NASA has, has been kind of a measuring stick, you know? Remember the huge match last year where this young freshman from Penn center. State was out there just battling all the way through the match, kind of warding off a lot of attacks, right? And he went on to win a national championship later in the year. Carter Storacci, a, a big win in the season was that match that he had with Logan Massa. So this would yeah, be he a fought huge, on some tough positions that day. The whole time, and he was able to get some good quick escapes, and that's exactly what Smith is doing here. Now he's biting for the upset. Can he get himself in position? He stopped moving his feet. An opportunity to score here for Massa. Single leg. No right in the middle of the mat, too, Shane. And he's got it, and he's taking the lead. This one going back and forth. You knew this was going to be one of the best matches of the night. Riding time and on factor, mass up by one. 60 seconds left in his third, and keep in mind, Smith's been hit for stalling once, Jim. He's got to keep his head up and start working up. He's got to start working up, but also he's draped over. Now he's going to go ahead and get that tight. This is tight right here. He can go ahead and score from this position. Smith has to be careful. He's got to keep, his, keep moving. Try to get his right hip down. This keep improves the ride. This is very seconds. painful. Yeah, he went right to the position to, to go away from the pain of what is happening on the ankle there. Logan Massa, a huge third period. This will be four near fall. Wow. You can hear the grunting and groaning of Smith underneath. Yeah, he's just... Again, Stay off right the there, you need to keep that right space. ankle straight forward right there. Just keep it as far away as you can and see if you can hip down on it. Short time left in it, but what a, you know, that was impressive by Massa getting that takedown and, 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 and the back points in that situation. Blowing this match wide open, that will build confidence. Yes, it will. Logan Massa, the riding time point, 10-4. Different look, look at his on, teammates, yeah, exactly. Different look from a few minutes ago. That's a huge win for Massa. You see the excitement? Now let's take a look at our pick for number two. ...that Braden Lee can certainly come out and have a definitive performance tonight against Peyton Robb. As you pointed out, Robb yes. wrestling here at 157, down from 65. Mark Manning said he was wrestling in the wrong weight class. That was on us, but now he is flourishing. So as we stand, if Peyton Robb is able to decision Brayton Lee, we would then be deadlocked at 16, Tim. Yeah, and our calculation says that, uh, uh, one, we know it'd be five and five, and we know there's been no falls, and so it comes down to the total match points scored, and right now, our calculations have Minnesota leading in that category, and so Peyton Robb's going to have to uh, yeah, do fingers. a little bit more than uh, just win, I think, for fingers. the criteria not to favor Minnesota. So Minnesota, they are looking to break Nebraska's five-match win streak against them. And they are doing it here on championship weekend here in Minneapolis, where they are honoring the 2001-2002 championship teams here tonight and also on Sunday when they welcome in Wisconsin. Fingers. Peyton Robb. Come on, guys, stay up. Seven and two this season. Biggest win was over number two Austin O'Connor of North Carolina by a five to two decision. For Brayton Lee last Friday night, edge number 12, Caleb Young of Iowa by a 4-3 decision at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Won the Bison Open with a 4-0 record. Brayton Lee's always coming forward. He's a shooter. He's going to, he's always been a shooter. He's going to keep shooting. He's offensive sometimes to a fault, but uh, he uh, is a cool customer. He just loves to wrestle. Right now, Peyton Robb. They both continue to battle against one another. What a duel it has been here in Minneapolis, Tim. Center. Right on cue for the alumni that came back for the celebration of the championships won in 2001 and 2002 program. And what a great way to go into the weekend with Minnesota, like you said, ending that five meet loss streak. Well, you're watching the best wrestling in the country here. 
on the Big Ten Network. Number five, Peyton Robb, 7-2 record, the sophomore from Owatonna, Minnesota. Wrestling in the Cornhusker singlet. A little bit of contrast styles, you know, Peyton, uh, Rob, he's strong and he loves these underhooks. And Brayton Lee likes that over tie snap. There he goes, snapping there. And he, he puts that in um, into a point where he gets a shot out of that. But even more importantly, can he get him turning a little bit so he can find the angle on his shot? Well, the one item Brenton Agam told us about Brayton Lee is that Brayton has a motor. He's a guy who likes to come out early and hard, and that Brayton is very well conditioned, doesn't get rattled. Final moments of what is going to be a scoreless first period. Number 10. Jumped off the whistle. Nice job of following by Lee. Nice job of hooking that ankle. Those little 15 second rides, that's what this is all about. I mean, uh, Brayton Lee is a, a well conditioned athlete, but you gotta know that you might have to do seven of those in a, in a, in a, in a period. Brayton Lee's done, but he's, he's improved on top. He's making at least the guy underneath work more than in the past, so he's really improved. Um, obviously, his preference is on his feet, but uh, nice job on top here, making Peyton Robb work, even if he does give up uh, some points. Brayton Lee, the three-time Indiana State champion, went to Brownsburg High School. This is huge. Uh, a ride that's uh, got the riding time going. It's that he defeated number 12, Caleb Young of Iowa last Friday night. And he just continues to be draped on the back yeah, and look of Peyton Robb. Look at the pinch back there. That's new for uh, Brayton. He's done a nice job. He's uh, behind the arms. He's able to do that uh, back ankle pinch uh, to set up, uh, coming up and putting pressure on uh, Peyton Robb. Really, really uh, nice job of Brayton Lee and uh, a, a marked improvement. And Brayton Lee continues to add to the riding time. We are scoreless. Action, guys. See that pinch that he's got going on there? It's so hard to defend because there's so much weight on that leg, and the guy can't catch his balance. Hey, Rob looking to scramble, but no. That's huge. Wow. What a predicament that Peyton Rob is in as Brayton Lee, much to the delight of the fans here at Maturi Pavilion. Here's how the second period unfolded. With a mat return and a nice follow through. So he anticipated the roll and then his anchor, his uh, hips just were like anchors coming down. Not rolling with him, but letting uh, Rob roll. And so now on their feet and takedown for Brayton Lee. Now he's rolling. Two points for Brayton Lee. He has seized control of the match as likely five matchup here at 157. Peyton Robb trying to swing the momentum back in his favor. And look at that Matt return there by Peyton Robb. But looking to bounce back to his feet is Brayton Lee. Peyton Robb has the waste of Brayton Lee. 75 seconds left here in the third period. A three to nothing lead for Brayton Lee as he extends the advantage that he has. If Lee holds on, Minnesota will defeat Nebraska, thus ending their five match win streak over the Golden Gophers. Trying to urge on Brayton Lee. They want to see two more points. Riding time has been secured. Brayton Lee, we talked about the uh, matchup here to end the night, and it has not disappointed from a standpoint of Lee's execution. He's uh, one of the best at this weight class, 
and improving all the time. Marked improvement for Brayton Lee, and uh, he's uh, got an exciting a few months ahead. So Brayton Lee will improve his record to 13-0 with the exclamation mark. Minnesota wins the dual meet, snapping Nebraska's five-match win streak over them. And now that has evaporated. Braden Lee remains undefeated at 13-0, and Minnesota takes home the duel on Chef. Over the last hour, we've been counting down the weekend's most competitive Big Ten matches. Here is our pick at number one. Great futures spent their time. Keep it legal up top doing the right thing academically, and that's that beautiful single leg there by Amin. Tried to step up, and you know, one guy's moving up a weight class, and last year, Miles Amin was at 97. Third at the national tournament, won the Big Ten title. Stop. At 197, beat Eric Schultz to claim his first Big Ten title. It was his third time in the Big Ten final. Had lost a couple to Mark Hall of Penn State. Great job there by Romero as Amin was in on the leg, three yeah. seconds in. Good defense. Yes, yeah, said that a little bit earlier. Sometimes punting is a good idea. You hear that in football all the time. I think that's exactly what, you know, not trying to do too much, square your hips up and don't give your opponent an opportunity to go ahead and better himself off the shot. Miles Amin, third at the NCAA Championships on three separate occasions. Scoreless after 60 seconds. A bronze medalist for San Marino at 86 kilos. Now, Shane, did you ever, did you know where San Marino was before the Amines? I did not. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know it either. Work through those ties, good. Mr. Moniz, my seventh grade geography yeah. teacher, he'd be disappointed right now. He'd be disappointed. I'm not so sure he knows. <laughs> Talk about a, a geography lesson. Tom Ryan had a funny line in our call. He said, the third best country at the Olympics, the Big Ten. Peter, yeah. Right. <laughs> of course, David Taylor, former Penn State great, winning Olympic gold at 86 kilos. Thomas Gilman, Kyle Snyder, Big Ten represented at the Olympics. Circle. Amin and Romero scoreless after two minutes in this first period. Stop. At the national tournament went two and two, had his tournament ended by Logan Massa. That was a 6-1 match last March. So Massa likes wrestling guys in that Ohio State singlet. And something better than stepping up against a rival. Working to score. Get on that. Amin ranked second in the country behind the reigning national champion and two-time Big Ten champion at 184, Aaron Brooks. Those two scheduled to meet next week. Can't wait for that one. Now, nice little shot there by Romero. That's what Amin does pretty well. He's pretty skilled at being able to cut the corner. Right. A little butt drag going right there. Trying to come hard. Knock him down a little bit further, but it's kind of already loosened that leg up a little bit here. You get a little bit further around, but not going to have enough time to score, but good defense. Scoreless after one. In their 100th year of wrestling, Michigan, especially in Detroit. Ooh, that cool opportunity. They want to win it. Love that standing, Gramby. Amin poked in the right eye. And he's set to get back to action. Quick escape for Amin. Couple fakes. Ramiro winning the Cliff Keen by defeating Taylor Venza, Nebraska, 7 to 3. Ohio State seconds as a team behind Nebraska. Michigan at that tournament finished third. Yeah, they're clear, but different Michigan team right now than what we saw at the, the, the Cliff King. All these guys are in there. Oh, nice little counter. Quickness that, that, that Amin has to get to that right leg, the one with the knee pad on it. Right there. Not as committed to that one. Left his 
Left his hands up high a little bit. Guys, forehead to forehead midway through the second. Just the escape by Amin here early in the second period. That's the only the score on the board. Collar tie. Romero able to clear. If you're a Romero, Jim, how do you get your offense going here? Right there, he shot to the other side, so he's got a shot to the right leg, now a shot to the left leg. But, you know, at some point in time, again, I think he's trying to increase his pace, break through the head hands defense, and when he gets there, he's got an additional problem here that, he's, that his opponent is really good at cutting the corner, meaning it, that you're shooting to one leg and it's just not there. Good reactions. Bounce it but their reactions Wrestle to get him to a neutral center. position Working and not center. back in on the attack. Straight on shots. He's been wrestling all of his life, and he's like, life has wrestled all summer, and, and I'm not making a suggestion he's not in shape or anything like that, but you've got an opportunity here to creep pace, and that's the most important thing. Let's look at this beautiful little standing Granby. Notice how he waits for the shoulder roll, right, until his opponent tries to bring him back down to the mat. Over the last hour, we've been counting down the weekend's most competitive Big Ten matches. Here is our pick at number one. He didn't, didn't try to roll too quickly on that. Waits for his opponent to bring him back down, then hits him. Shoulder roll. Good execution by Amin. Now Romero will go on bottom. Same thing. Something similar. Yeah, very similar. Like that from both guys. It's been 1-1 one, one score. Who's going to be the guy that gets it done here? Misdirection. It was it really wasn't misdirection as to the shot he's been the leg he's been shooting at the whole Wrestle through that. time. To me, Jim, the difference yeah, in this match, fingers. the first five seconds. Amin had a clean single leg, couldn't finish. Yep. Again, that's why that, that good defense of Romero squaring his hips up and punting, not trying to do too much and getting to a neutral position now is putting him in the third period here with a minute 20 seconds left with a chance to win. Yes, that was great defense from Romero in the match's opening seconds. But you've, you know, one of the other ways that you can go with a guy is you can go ahead and make, his, make him heavy, make him heavy on, your, on his head. Center. The attack level is increased here for me. Great desire always has had for getting to legs and trying to score. It's, it's just natural for him. Now. That's the way he competes. Mean with 110 career victories. Caleb Romero doing all he can to keep him from 111. Look at the, look at the footwork, the, the difference between when we saw earlier matches where the guys weren't moving their feet. See the shuffle trying to get a little bit slighter angle, maybe get that, get the, the Romero to bring that right leg forward. He brings that light right forward. That's the one he wants to attack. He can get to it. He'll drop right so down action, off of it. Maybe he'll back up. And he's trying to put that right foot in the trap right there. This match, right 10 now. seconds from sudden victory. And I just don't feel right now that Romero is making Mamin work hard enough. You know, you get in the tie up like that. Make sure the guy feels your collar tie. You yank on him right there. Make it a roar. Can Romero pull off the upset and knock off second rank Miles Amin? It's really important then too to get your athlete not to settle. You know, you're, you're coaching these guys in the corner. Don't settle for, for tie-ups. This is not a position to rest. You've got to try to create offense. This is the time to win it. Nice post double right there. Now go behind, roll through. Good action by these guys. Great Way to go. scramble. Wow. Great wrestling. Shot there from Amin. A reshot. Action in the center. Work in the center. Big snap. Big snap. Nice ankle, ankle pick back. right there. And a go behind situation, and now they go off the mat. A couple of fantastic flurries between these two. That was the best opportunity to Romero has had up to this point on his feet. And congratulations, Rules Committee, on getting this right here. Getting an extra minute right now to watching these guys go on the feet. We don't know what's gonna happen here, but this is a great rule change. Switch Here's the mean. 
Comes back over. Who's going to be able to get their belt buckle to the mat? Right now, it's Amin. Can he come ahead and no control. get a little bit of elevation right there? He slips out and he collects the takedown. Miles Amin in sudden victory, 3-1. We hope that you enjoyed this edition of Wrestling in 60, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Join us again next week as we continue to showcase America's premier wrestling conference, the Big Ten.